Welcome to Make Life Fun. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, founder of Backroads Coaching, where we pave our own path to self-acceptance. Think of me as your self-love bestie, here to guide you, support you as you let go, rewrite the thoughts and beliefs that are blocking you from loving yourself and living your best life. This season, we are talking business, pleasure, love, money, and of course, all things motherhood. This show is sponsored by 35 Ways to Brighten Up Your Day. I created this ebook that you can download instantly at brighteneredays.com to help you have more fun and create more joy by building the habits of taking simple, intentional, empowering action every day, bite-sized inspiration and action steps to brighten your day. It starts with you deciding you're going to be happy and have more fun, and this will lead you to a brighter future. Get it today for yourself or someone special in your life and support the show by going to brighterdays.com. Hello, hello, soul family. Welcome back to the Big Life Fun Show. I am so happy to have you with me today and also my dear friend, Darcy Hawkshurst. She's going to be talking to us about advocating, about clarity, unfolding, and I'm so excited for you to be here, Darcy. Welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. Thank you for having me. It is an honor to be here with you. (laughs) I would love for you to tell our listeners what is lighting you up right now. What is it that's making you smile? What is bringing you joy? You know what? The first thing that comes to mind are the buds popping up out of the litter of leaves at my mailbox. They're like, I got little green sprouts about like this. And for, you know, life in the Midwest, like in a temperate climate, just this after the long, cold winter, you know, and barren landscapes to see that like the cycle of life returning. And it's that resonates with me on every level, right down into my bones, because I'm in a place in my life too, right now, where it's like, I'm creating kind of a new life for myself. Mm -hmm. And I could just, I need like all the inspiration and the guidance that I'm just open to all of it. So it's fun. I love that. Thank you for sharing that with us (laughs) because we just got lots of snow here in Idaho. And so we're not seeing that yet. So (laughs) there's hope (laughs) it's coming. Isn't that funny though? Like somebody like, (laughs) You know, they say it's always a uh, sunny somewhere or like yeah. somebody's always ahead of you. Mm-hmm. And like, isn't that what we do for each other though? Right? Like we just, we all grow through our own seasons and cycles and call that out when we can and celebrate it when we can yeah. so that we can witness that in each other. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's yeah, that's beautiful. And that paints such a picture. I would love for you to tell us, Darcy, what is it that you are creating? Like you said, you're creating a new life for yourself. And I know the journey to creating something new and building a new identity, because I've been there multiple times myself, but I would love to hear your journey of this unfolding. And I'm happy to tell it. I love what you actually just said. So this is my, um, you just gave me a beautiful springboard. This I'm creating a new identity. and, And let me just explain to you why. Because basically for the last, oh my gosh, almost 30 years, Like, I don't, I don't really like to identify with the numbers because I, for one, am ageless, but like, it's been a long time. I, for the last, for a couple decades of my life, my identity was the mother of a brain injured child. Right. And so, because I'll give you a really quick story. My daughter was, I was a young single mom when I had my daughter, Haley, she was 12 days old when she came down with this fever of almost 104 in the middle of the night and rushed her off to the hospital. She had spinal meningitis. You know, we didn't end up leaving the hospital for another couple of weeks. We were eventually sent home. You know, she survived the meningitis, but she was brain injured. And so I was sent home eventually with this tiny baby who had a long list of disability labels attached to her now and a big bottle of phenobarbital. And I was told like, just take her home and raise her like a normal child. And I had no idea what, what that even meant. I hadn't even slept in a dark room for three weeks, you know, cause I had stayed by her in the hospital and I didn't know it at the time. But when I look back now, I can see very clearly the moment that I became that, mm-hmm. that mother of a brain injured child. And like, that was going to be who I was. And it was going to limit, like, it was also going to be who I wasn't. Mm-hmm. You know, all, all of the doors that closed for me in that moment, I'm like, it was clear. Like I heard those doors closing. Right. 
Yeah. So I spent basically the next 20 years. Well, we spent the first four years trying to follow their advice, but you know, Haley wasn't a normal child. And by the time she was four and on four different medications and having seizures anyway, and falling behind her peers, you know, and the late, the list of labels got longer and every specialist we saw had a new label and no real solutions for us. Like none of it was working. Yeah. I was just, I, I just became someone I did not ever intend to be. And I remember waking up one day and just, and she was having a meltdown again because she was frustrated all the time. And this is what I eventually came to understand was what that brain injury had done and what that meant for her life experience. And then number two, that none of that was written in stone. Mm -hmm. Like there is this word we know now, neuroplasticity, but in that moment, that day she had a meltdown and I had a meltdown and I, I did, I had another moment of clarity where I just inside of me, like every cell in my body was like resonating, like, no, this cannot be it. This is, mm -hmm. this will not be who we're going to be. And so it was literally that afternoon that my mom had said like, oh, I, I read this book and I saw this thing. Here's a number, the phone number you can call these people have, you know, and we just got onto the path. Like mm -hmm. literally the path mm -hmm. started to light up in front of us. Not the whole thing ever. You never get to see the whole thing. You get to see like the next one right step. And that's really all you ever have to take. Right. So I just started doing that and cut to the chase. I mean, I'm I'm working on a memoir around this and I, I'm delighted to share the whole story there, but I think it's enough for, for you and folks to know that like Haley, she lives at home with me, but she's an independent, successful college student. Now she's out mm -hmm. in the other room taking a quiz on, I don't know, some biology class she's taking. She's, you know, she's studying entrepreneurship and, and nutrition science. And so she's got these beautiful gifts to give. And it was definitely a non-traditional journey for mm -hmm. her and I both, but this idea that she gave me this beautiful gift. You know, it came wrapped, came wrapped a little messy. It felt like at first, but this beautiful gift to really decide who and how we want to be. And then everything does conspire to help you live into that. Yeah. So yeah, what a gorgeous story of the clarity that came from the mess that you made into not only your message, but you transformed it and made it something beautiful for yourself and your daughter. I mean, yes. Except that's a beautiful thing to say as we sit here on this gorgeous day, like, you know, in this moment of clarity, like, sure. I mean, I still make a mess, you know, like I am this totally flawed <laughs> human being, right? Like I had to restore integrity this morning around, you know, some things I said that I wish I hadn't said in the way I had said them a day ago. Like, so that, I think that's the other thing for me. That's this, this piece that I love to talk about and share with other moms because it's so in the water, like it's in the air, it's in the water. Like you talk about it, mom guilt. It's not like we can just toss those things out and like become who we want. Like it is a moment by moment practice, mm -hmm. you, you know, because there's all of this pressure and especially like, I want to speak for the special needs moms. I can't speak for them. You know, I, everyone's unique and got their own journey, but having lived that life and lived with that label and lived with the pressure of what it takes to have a child with a medical emergency and more than one, you know, when, you, when you're taking high doses of anti-convulsive medications, you know, we had more than one midnight scare with her, you know, see, she had seizures and, you know, medication reactions and all kinds of things that come with that territory. And it's so hard on the moms because it's hard on the kids, yeah. but it's hard on the moms because not only are we holding this heavy weight and we're holding the grief of, you know, a, a kid who's struggles and maybe is not what we wanted. Maybe this isn't the parenting journey we had envisioned for ourselves, but then we hold all of society's freaking expectations of us. And it's a lot. And I did, I hit my own burnout with it. Like you just can't hold all of that society. We just don't have systems in place in our culture to support moms in general enough, let alone moms of special needs, kids and kids with medical issues and, you know, mental health issues, all of that stuff. So yeah, I dropped it. I dropped it all and hit burnout and couldn't get out of bed for a while, covered with a terrible rash, like my adrenals went down. And again, another moment of clarity. Like I had learned all these tools to help. I was helping my daughter outgrow her brain injury. You know, I was learning all about nutrition and, you know, myelinated axons and 
neuroplasticity and estrogen on the brain, seizure mm-hmm. disorders. Like I was at this very high level, I was learning from like world leading experts. We were learning about muscle imbalance, you know, how to, how to correct or reverse these labels feel so heavy and permanent, like cerebral palsy. That's a muscle imbalance. Like you can change these things mm-hmm. in a body. And I was learning all of this. And then what ended up in bed by myself because I wasn't applying any of that mm-hmm. to my self-care practice. So I don't know. I don't know if anybody else out there can relate or if I'm just somebody who likes to take their clarity with a really hard bump or something, you know, but I think that's the other message I'd like to share, Josie, is, you know, and you and I had emailed about this a little bit, this idea that like, what does abundance even mean? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what am I feeling abundant in? I'm feeling abundant with that clarity. Mm -hmm. You know, because how do you know more clearly what feels good than when you've really been at the bottom? And yeah, I'm not at the bottom anymore and I will never go there again. (laughs) I mean, I do have some tools now, you know, the dips don't go as low, right? And Haley's journey definitely isn't linear, but you know, she keeps her trajectory is taking her into beautiful places of independence and and education and Mm -hmm. launching her own platform to teach people and share her story in the way that Mm -hmm. feels comfortable to her and inspire others and uplift people who, who want a way out of these, you know, we call them diseases or disabilities, but there's just really different stages of, of brain health. And Mm -hmm. as somebody who's been there, she shares that really beautifully. So yeah, I'm in a place of abundance of clarity right? (laughs) Yeah. And that abundance of clarity to me, it's so luxurious sounding because (laughs) what we do usually, most of us is we take our, our messes that are the burnout and we take them and we make them mean something about us. Uh, Right. right. And we make them mean that we're unworthy. We're Mm -hmm. not enough. Like we put all these awful BS labels on ourselves. And you're saying you're taking your, you're taking your burnout, you're taking your journey and you're finding the clarity in it. And so I would love for you to share some tools. I would love for you to share some, some ways of how you did that to gain this clarity, because I think that's where the medicine is, is in that clarity, because then you can take the lessons instead of taking And I mean, you still lived it. You still have the moments of, like you said, we're all human, but you were (laughs) able to take the pieces that are blessings and you're able to bless others. This is Mm -hmm. what you're doing today with us here. Well, I'm just going to let that land for a second, actually, Mm -hmm. because even though I'm, I knew that to hear you say it really hits at a level that's really moving because I feel like if anything, so when I did make it about me, you know, the, the poor me. You know, why am I the one that has to ride in an ambulance at 4 a.m. with a child turning blue? Like, why am I the one who has to quit my job and stay home and spend 20 years, you know, rehabilitating my child? Like, why am I the one who can't take a vacation because I can't afford it? Why am I the one that has to live in Section 8 housing because that's the only place I can afford because I've made this choice to be with my with my kid and I'm the only one who knows how to do this, this rehabilitation stuff that I'm learning about? Like, why am I? Like, I've had my poor me moments, right? And, you know, I think what I eventually came to see was that this is an intelligent universe. Like, This is a loving universe. I'm a beloved child of the universe. Mm -hmm. This has to be for me, yes, but this has to be for more than me. Like if I lived this and then learned these things, because trust me, I tried. I, for the last couple of years, I actually did kind of try to hide with it. I just thought, well, you know, I got Haley where she needs to be and I'm where I need to be. And I'm going to, you know, finally, I got to play catch up. Like I've got a career now and I need to earn money and take a vacation vacation and take care of myself and like live this kind of normal. I need to live a normal life now. And I tried that for a couple of years and I failed really miserably. I mean, number one, I couldn't get the jobs that I want. I mean, I was overqualified or wasn't the right fit. It wasn't the right timing, or I'd get the job and be ready to show up. And this enormous no (laughs) would Mm -hmm. well up inside me because if I was at that desk building somebody else's dream, I would never be here to share this message. And so I feel like if I lived that and the universe loves me, then that was a gift. It can't have just been for me because that's not the way it works. Has to be for someone else. So I'm trusting that out there somewhere is that mom on that couch feeling really alone. If you can hear this, you're not. I've been there. Thought I was alone. I thought surely I had done something wrong. I thought, what have I done to deserve this? These things that feel so bad in the moment. And it just takes, if you're at that place in your story, then you just got to keep living through the story because that's the contrast that we need to gain the clarity. Those are the moments that we really do decide 
who we are, what we're about. So I guess, you know, you ask me for tips. I mean, gosh, I give health tips all the time now, right? <laughs> if you've got burned out adrenals, I've got a program for you. I decided I couldn't keep that to myself either. So I, yeah, I packaged as best I can. I'm, you know, I'm still, it, it has iterations, right? But packaged all of those holistic health tips that I learned into a, a step-by-step journey. I call it the pathway to thriving because what I didn't know here. So here's what I didn't know. So maybe this will help some people. Like this is true. This, my daughter and I are having, we're on parallel journeys. I like to say like if, and I'll just speak of my own for the, for the moment, but you know, if I was at burnout and all I wanted was to feel better, you know, I had to get on the path to better health, right. Which was some step-by-step, you know, mental, emotional, but very physical. Yes. I had to look at what I was eating and get enough rest. And, you know, so I had to get on this pathway to better health, but here's, here's the fascinating thing I never knew. Like the path back toward health doesn't stop at health. Like if you keep it up, you keep moving and that path keeps going. I live in this place I call thriving now. I had no idea. Like I'm in uncharted territory. I had no idea that if you just keep it up, you get to thriving. Haley's in, in almost the same, you know, hers is a parallel journey, but she every day kind of pinches herself a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like I dreamed of this for so long, you know, like of being seizure free and then of being able to go to college. And then, you know, and so I said to her the other day, you're actually, you're going to have to come up with some new dreams. Mm-hmm. Like it's time to dream again. Right. Cause oh. you have to keep going. I love that so much. Oh my gosh. So how did you advocate for her mom? Cause I know that, that, that woman that sit on the couch that is feeling alone is wanting to be that advocate. And you talk about being an advocate for your child. Like you came to a point where you said that is not going to be it. Like there has to be something better. And you went on a mission to find that. So how were you able to advocate in such a powerful way for your daughter to have this parallel amazingness that you have today? That's such a great question. And I think the advice I can give to other moms and dads too, you know, I've been a mom, so I, I, you have my heart. All the mamas have my heart. This is all about trusting your instincts, really. One of the things I recognized is that, that the, what felt so terrible was really the thought that I had to live this way. Thoughts like, this is all we can do for her. This is how she's going to be limited. This is all like those limiting thoughts were what hurt so bad. And I came to realize it was that pain that was a message from my deeper, all wise knowing self saying, Mm-mm, it's not, and we're not with you on that thought. It's interesting because over the years, when I tell this story in different times or places, and and I had to do a lot of fundraising, you know, to make this work for Haley, I would, you know, write and tell the story and ask, you know, foundations and people, you know, for money to help cover the expensive treatments and things like that. And I would get a lot of praise. Like you did such a great thing. How did you do this? How did you make this great thing happen? And I have to admit, it's not what I had. It's not like qualities that I had that enabled me to do this thing. It's the qualities that I didn't have. I was not able to accept that that's all there was. I was not able to accept that life was going to feel this terrible for very much longer. So it was my inability to really accept it. And that's what I want to say to other moms. Like when you are feeling frustrated and alone and scared for what's going to happen to your child, those heavy feelings alone are the sign that this, that's not for you. You're not on the path that's for you. So you do need to trust your instincts. If you're wanting something more for your child, if you're heartbroken because you think you have to live with this, your breaking heart is the sign that yes, you need to look for something else, right? Like we have to understand that that pain is coming from a place where you don't have to accept it. So that's my first thing. I don't know if I'm saying that as well as, yeah. as clearly as I want to, but so that's the first thing just to trust your instincts. That's easier said than done, maybe, especially in the beginning, you know, if you only have two choices and they both feel kind of bad, but that's exactly what you do. Then you always have two choices and one of them feels less bad than the other one. And that's your choice. Mm. And again, that's like step by step by step that path lights up for you. Yeah. Because here's the other thing that happens for the moms of special needs kids Mm -hmm. is that we are told there are not solutions for them. And that's only because we're asking people who don't know the solutions. So you have to keep asking, okay? There's plenty of us out there that do know the solutions. And if you're talking to people who say there are none, you need to start talking to some other people. (laughs) And, you know, right? And that's, again, where we can be guided. Like, it comes. sometimes that guidance comes as a curiosity. And you end up asking a question or going to a place or 
picking up a book and, you know, one thing will lead to another. So that's the other thing. The advice I have is number one, you advocate for your child by trusting yourself more than any expert out there. Because if you're with an expert who says your child is hopeless, you need another expert. It's not true. And your the pain inside you is telling you that it's not true. So we just have to keep going and we have to keep looking and we have to believe that it is possible. The other thing I would say is just don't waste any time with things that don't resonate with you. You know, we were offered a lot of treatments that just really felt, again, felt terrible to me. They did not really, they didn't feel like the solutions that I was looking for. And, you know, without getting into all the nitty gritty details, you know, things like a lobotomy, like, I'm so glad I never did that. That was one of the solutions presented to us. And I see it all the time. It happens all the time. I wasn't able to accept the things that felt off to me. And I think that is what makes us good advocates for ourselves and for our children. That's the other piece of this. So really mothers, when you're advocating for your child, you are advocating for yourself and vice versa, right? Like, and that's the other thing about self-care too. A lot of women will avoid self-care because they feel guilty spending that time or energy on themselves. When the truth is you cannot pour from an empty cup. And so the best thing we can do for our beloveds is to take care of ourselves. And the best way to advocate for your child is to advocate for yourself and to trust what you're feeling and know, know that that inner voice is speaking to you. We all have one. Beautifully said Mm. because that, yeah, that's just beautifully said. I have nothing to (laughs) add to that. So thank you for sharing that because it's not just mamas with special needs that need to hear this, that we need to listen to ourselves, that we have that answer within, within us. And so I would love to talk a little bit about this unfolding piece of on you, Darcy, I would love to talk about, cause I know you have some great new things that you're building, right? Cause you said you're, you're creating this whole new life for yourself. And so now that we've talked a little bit about the journey, mm-hmm. I would love to sit in <laughs> and celebrate where you're headed and where you are. Yeah, well, I'm going to build an empire, Josie. I'm just going to build an empire of well-being because we've had, we've seen, we, all you have to, you don't have to look very far out your window. I've got a window right here. There is an empire built already and it's built on the profits that come from selling things to women. Women are a multi-billion dollar. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. I'm sure we are a multi-trillion dollar industry. Like I just said, for self-care products and for what else? tons of things that they sell us that they would not be able to sell us if we did not believe in our own lack, if we didn't believe in our own flaws, if we didn't believe in our own unworthiness. And so I have a counter offer. What if we build an empire based on this foundation? You are enough. You know, your instincts are enough. You deserve everything you want. Now, here's the thing though. This is where I deviate a little bit. Like I love all this, you know, the industry popping up around women's empowerment, you know, and women in business, women entrepreneurs. But I do think there's a little bit of myth busting here. And I'm not saying that, I am not open, you know, to hitting a six figure, seven figure business. Like, but here's the truth. Like those numbers, I'm not, I'm not running for numbers, you know, because there's a sense of this piece of abundance that, that I have had the privilege of experiencing. And it's this, it's like, once you've been broke, it it doesn't scare you anymore. Once you understand like how little it really does take to make you happy. So a starlit walk, I mean, there were years that I was so broke. I couldn't, couldn't really spend much on Christmas for my daughter. Right. But why was that? That was a choice that I was making to give her a healthy brain. So she could have the life she wants now. So she could go to college. So, you know, we had to make a choice to go for like a snow lit, dark night, starry walk, holding her warm little hand, you know, like that's all the abundance I needed in that moment. And once you can tap into that, I mean, to me now you might have to check with me again in another, you know, two or three years. Like I'm not saying I won't ever chase those numbers, but the idea is like that. I know what abundance feels like already. And so what I'm doing now is step-by-step and the money that comes from it, or, you know, the house that comes from it, or, you know, none of that can match the feeling that already that I already know is there and asking other people to tap in from there. Because the truth is when you live from there, you don't need to spend money to, to convince yourself that you have that, like you have that. And it's fascinating because we're just sold so much. And what we're really sold is like this half-assed version of ourselves that doesn't measure who we really are on the inside. Mm So yeah, I'm building a business. It's called the Vibrant Woman Program. I was a little reluctant to come here. The universe really had to kind of kick me hard on the backside to get me to come here. I wanted to help kids. I wanted to help kids like my daughter, Haley. 
you know, in, in those years that I helped her, I also, you know, I got a master's degree in like literacy and language ed. Like I became a, a neurological evaluator. I know all this stuff about the brain. Like I have certification after certification that qualifies me to do what I was doing with my daughter and help other kids. I worked with students with learning disabilities. I helped parents and teachers with my consulting understand them so they could help them better. And then it just occurred to me, it was my pandemic pivot, but I I just really thought, you know, the only way to help these kids is to help their moms. The moms are burned out. And so pivot it was, and the Vibrant Woman program was born. And to be honest with you, it's the tools in the toolbox are not all that different from the ones that we use to help kids. It's all about how to have a healthy body and healthy brain has everything to do with tapping back into our, our nature, you know, human bodies and brains evolved on this planet, you know, in certain environment. And we just need to kind of replicate that environment again. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard to do. I mean, I shouldn't say hard. It's, you know, it's simple to do, but there's a lot of challenges in our modern world. So I, yeah, I teach women how to get on that path and go away from burnout toward thriving. And, you know, everybody has their own journey there, how how far, how long, you know, how deep with this work they want to go. But yeah, it's just amazing because when I get the feedback, some of them are moms, some are not, it's just women that I help, but I get feedback from them. Like I'm painting again, or I'm painting for the first time, or I finished my novel, or I'm, you know, I'm beginning to dance or, you know, whatever it is. Like I know when they get to these levels of experiencing their own deep well of creativity and they find those beautiful moments of joy that don't depend on anything else, because that's the other thing about us as women. Like we're taught that our value comes from, think about it. A woman gets labeled. We're either a miss or a missus or a ms. Like everything about us is determined by our relationship to a man or a child or something outside of us. When women tap in, when they get in touch with their nutrition, when they get, we clear out all the static, right? Like you just, you determine your own carbohydrate tolerance. So you get off this insulin blood sugar roller coaster. You, you get rid of the brain fog, you know, you get rid of the belly fat and the sleepless nights and the hormone imbalance. Like when you clear out all that static and you are in a thriving body and brain, you can hear that inner wisdom Mm -hmm. so much more clearly. And you get to have this space of creativity and joy in your own being. And I did, I just got an email this morning from a woman who, who's painting again. And she says like something, I wish I could quote her perfectly, but she said, this is mine now. And nobody can take this from me Mm -hmm. again. And the future is, you know, I feel my future to be unlimited. And to hear that from someone who yeah, is, is growing, I don't want to say older, she's growing wiser and deeper, right? She's ageless now because she's got herself. She's come home to herself. So yeah, I found that Josie. And it's, I just thought I can't not share the tools for other women to, to yeah. find that. Right. Yeah. Keep absolutely. it to yourself. <laughs> and it lights you up. Like you literally light up talking about this and that Do is I- so amazing to witness Uh, and that so many women that is exactly what we need is to come home to ourselves and a lot of people don't know what that means to come home and you just explained it beautifully and so I want to say thank you for that Mm -hmm. and would you be open to sharing a tip or a tool in your toolbox to thriving to getting from this place of looking outside of ourselves for the answers to knowing a deep, deep knowing that we are enough, (laughs) like it's Mm. enough. Yeah. That's a great question. You know, I think there are a lot of practices out there. Luckily this whole field of like embodiment work is really blowing up and there's a lot of beautiful teachers in this space. And I think, you know, we definitely need all the voices there. If I were to add my voice to this, which I guess that's what I'm doing, right? I'm going to throw my hat in the ring and say, look, for me, it has everything to do with moving my body every day in a place that resonates with nature. So for me right now, and a lot of the women that I'm counseling and coaching right now, it's a simple walk outside. Now, every, you know, everybody knows this already. I can already hear, I can hear a few eyeballs rolling a little bit like, you know, no, we really, we wanted something. We wanted a powerful tool, Darcy. Do not underestimate the power of going outside, strolling at a nice, easy intensity. A lot of women are sedentary for their work and then run ragged with their families. And they're trying to squeeze in 
a workout. Hey, listen, I did it. But Zumba, you know, that crazy, you know, high intensity workout 30 minutes before bed, because you finally got everybody wrangled, you know, asleep in your house. Like that's the wrong timing, wrong intensity. You're going to wake up in the middle of the night. Like we're, we're trying, we're coming at it kind of, well, we're coming at it from the angles we've been taught. That's the other piece of this. Like if that feels great to you, this is what I say. Again, you have to use your instincts. Like if that feels great to you and then you crash and sleep and have the best, you sleep like a baby <laughs> through the night, then that's the right thing for you. But most of us, that's going to give you a cortisol spike at 3.30 a.m. You're going to be up, right? And then when you're awake, the thoughts come. So listen, this is the way we listen to our body. This is the way we listen. Like if you feel a little dread or you feel a little, if you feel tired after your workout, a little hangry, like, no, you're allowed to stop. For most of us to recover from stress, we need to take things easy. And that doesn't mean be sedentary, but go outdoors. We need the CO2, O2 exchange with the plants. We need the sunlight on our, our skin. We evolved that way as human beings. We need a low heart rate intensity. So we need to be strolling. Like if your mind wanders while you're doing it, you're doing it right. <laughs> if you get a little creativity kind of trickling down in when you're doing it, you're doing it right. So yeah, nice, easy walk, ideally by yourself. But I know sometimes we have, we're going to have to take the dogs and the littles and the, you know, we have to do it that way, but outside outside. I know you got snow. You're going to have to put your boots on, but, <laughs> <laughs> and because this is the thing, like we need to remember that. Yes, we evolved on this planet. We're human beings first, and we need to let ourselves be resonant with nature. We need the look of the sky, our, like our eyes and our brain need that we need to move. We cross pattern movement, like walking we evolve these big, beautiful cortices. The sophisticated human cortex is a function of being outside walking all day, every day, eating a high fat diet. So I guess that's more than one tip, but I just welcome people to begin to, to do things more naturally again, eat natural whole foods, you know, give up the things in the wrapper, give up the things with a paragraph long list of ingredients, give up anything with sugar in it. Won't be easy at first, but we've got a lot of static and we need to clear that static. That makes sense. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Get outside, like even like you said, bundle up, like go outside, even if it's just for a second to breathe in that air. Like oh. that does wonders. And in the summer, you will find me outside all day long. I just will live outside just because it feels so good. <laughs> like if I could take this podcast outside, <laughs> that's where we'll be meeting. <laughs> so totally I totally agree. agree with you there, and I love what you said that it's so simple that we sometimes take simple and we throw it out and we're looking for complicated. Mm -hmm. So I want to bring back what you said that, yes, it could be something this simple to go outside, but it is what you need, like your soul needs, your body needs. So to do it. So I'm right there with you saying, yeah, get it yourself outside. As we're wrapping up this beautiful conversation, Darcy, I would love for you to tell our listeners where they can contact you, where they can support you, where they can get on this train with you. <laughs> Yeah. Come get on the train. It's going to thriving and there's room for everybody and you're never late and you're never behind and there's always a space. So yeah, I can be found. I'm on, on the socials. I'm on Facebook and Instagram just under my name, Darcy Hawkshurst. And should I spell that? Yeah, it's kind of a doozy. So it's D-A-R-C-I-H-A-W-X-H-U-R-S-T. Darcy Hawkshurst. And that's in my website as well, darcyhawkshurst.com. And you can come over there and actually have a really nice blog that's there. So if you're wanting to know more about the story behind Haley, her journey from brain injury, my journey from burnout, and yeah, just any of the details of that story, it's all there too. So love to see people come check out the blog because again, the message that I really, my most important message is that you're not alone. If you've been struggling with anything like this, you're not alone. And it doesn't have to be like that forever. There is a way out. There is hope. And so I encourage everybody to trust their instincts. Gorgeous. Well, Darcy, thank you for your heart and for sharing so openly that there is a pathway from the burnout to thriving. There is a pathway from feeling hopeless to being full hope and transformation. And that is why I love these conversations on this show is because it just shows possibility. And if it's possible for one person, it's possible for us all. So thank you for being that way shower. That's right. Thank you for the light you bring to the world, Josie. You're a gift. I appreciate you. Thank you for being part of the self-love movement. Your support and care matters here. 
please be sure to subscribe, review, and share. And get your ultimate daily planner freebie today by visiting makewifefunpodcast.com. When you're ready to step deeper into my vibration and work together, go to backrosecoaching.com. Thank you again for listening. See you next time.